Uh, I'm in year six or seven of a at least 20 year project to get people to talk to each other uh, locally, real life, in person, and create community. And so um, I, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, uh, and sp speaking of that, I, I have to say I was at the very first uh, PDF conference uh, where Mika and Andrew are doing the job of, of creating community, and they're doing a fantastic job at it. The first one was a few years ago, and it was much smaller than this. And now in New York, the PDF conference is absolutely enormous, so I can't wait to see how PDF Europe uh, grows in the years ahead. It's going to be it's going to be really something amazing, and they're 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 doing it wonderfully. So, um, okay, so in this. Uh, outside of my uh, the, the, the day job of trying to create community with Meetup, which I'll tell you about in a moment, uh, I had uh, an idea with some with some colleagues to uh, you know, this crazy idea of um, when um, my country America was was inaugurating a community organizer as president. Uh, we were just so excited about it, we decided to do, to, 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 do, to do something, which is hand out a half a million, make and distribute half a million name tags. To, uh, to the people showing up at the inauguration to get them to not just stare at the, at the uh, big jumbotron screens, uh, but to maybe talk to each other at the inauguration. And so uh, this, uh, this here, what you see on the screen, is uh, what was distributed to half a million of, and so there was about you know, maybe 50 or 100 of, 100 of us distributing these 500,000 stickers, and we found that you know, as people were streaming in, it was really, Difficult. They they weren't paying attention to us. They they were uh, you know doing their own thing. It was cold. It was freezing in, in January. And so I uh, so at one moment um, I stood there and I just yelled out to the crowd. I said, uh, "Hello, my fellow Americans." Uh, like the sticker says, "Hello, my fellow Americans." My name is. I said, "Hello," and and this amazing thing happened, which is the crowd started, uh, said, hello back. <laughs> it was one of the most bizarre experiences I had. I, I did it again, I said, hello, my fellow members, and they said, hello back. And I, I said, I, I held up the stickers, and, I, and, and we were handing out, the, you know, 100,000 markers with these, and, and they, the crowd started taking them, and the crowd drew a crowd, and they, and the whole thing just sort of uh, really gelled and, and took off. And, and, and the lesson from this was that, you know, people in their, in our sort of consumer, um, uh, passive uh, passenger spectator audience mode. You know we're not used to to uh, to saying hello to anyone or being told hello. And uh, and and uh, it was this uh, shock to the system when people were told hello and they they engaged in conversation. But this whole this whole journey uh, started a few years ago when we started a, a website called Meetup. And um, uh, one of the first people to take advantage of it was this guy running for senate. Uh, two things to note on this page. One is the, uh, uh, you know, how small the kids are, <laughs> and then the other is how uh, 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 Obama decided he wanted his people to self-organize local meetups across the state of Illinois, and that he would show up at any one of them that got enough, that got a certain, you know, threshold of people. And so he did. He spent a whole bunch of his time campaigning, going from meetup to meetup. And it sort of planted uh, a seed, I guess, in, in, in a way to campaign for him. Now, since then, um, Meetup is uh, been, you know quietly growing and growing and growing and growing. In fact, actually, empowering the, the backbone of the Glenn Beck um, uh, um, communities of people organizing local meetups. Uh, he is uh, very much an, an anti-Obama uh, uh, person in America. And so, but, okay, so let me, let me give you a quick moment on, on, um, on Meetup. So today and every day, today, Saturday, October, or November 21st, there are uh, somewhere between three and 5,000 Meetups going on around the world. Most of them in America, but they're now, but in Europe it's growing very fast right now. So for example, um, as we speak right now, uh, at 10, 15 a.m. here in Barcelona, somewhere probably nearby, the Barcelona Road Cycling Meetup uh, is having their, uh, their, uh, their meetup, and they are, they've organized these bike rides. There's also a Barcelona Hiking and Outdoors uh, meetup with 400 uh, people that are part of it. And, um, 
across, across Europe here in London, there's something called the Social Innovation Meetup, which is um, and the Social Innovation Camp, which is um, uh, bringing together hackers and people <laughs> making all kinds of stuff to try to make uh, um, London better. Um, uh, on Monday, in a couple days, there's 81 people going to a uh, app jam in London. Uh, that is about making, uh, bringing together app developers and entrepreneurs, etc. But the word that we see a lot of when people self-organize local community is this word, let's. So here the London Java meetup is saying in their description, let's develop something cool together. Here the, uh, a London open source car meetup saying, let's build an open source car, whatever that means. Uh, this is a meetup started in London just uh, yesterday or the day before, which I, I thought, oh, this is going to be this is going to be horrendous. The I love me meetup, but in fact, what's fascinating about this and that what it says is, if you read it, what it, it's not about me. It's saying let's start supporting each other and helping each other. Uh, and uh, I don't know what that has to do with I love me, but um, people do the darndest things. Um, but across the network, they're, they're saying, let's help each other out in this small business meetup. Let's connect for a better future uh, with this business networking meetup. Let's make a movie in movie making meetups. Let's clean up the beach. Let's talk multiple sclerosis. Let's beat cancer. These are the words of the, that the people are writing as they're self-organizing. Let's jump out of a perfectly good airplane <laughs> and the Tampa, Florida skydiving meetup. And um, let's go green. Uh, and then there you then the acronym let's let local exchange transaction system. There's all these initiatives of around um, local currencies and bartering and trading, which is really fascinating stuff. So this is what happens when people self-organize. They use the internet to get off the internet and do this very powerful stuff. Two recent favorites of mine of the trends going on and how people are using technology like this is one is the babysitting collectives, the number one category of all the meetups going on. Thousands of meetups a week are the moms meetups. And they're creating these really fantastic intricate systems for how they babysit each other's kids. So hundreds of women will come together and they'll have a whole calendar of how they will babysit each other's kids so that frees uh, them up to work or do uh, whatever they need to do. Um, it's, it's, this is, this is you know, the, the new world emerging uh, of people self-organized. Another, uh, another phenomenon that I've noticed is this phrase D-I-H um, across the meetup network. D-I-H stands for, any guesses? Not do it here, it's do it herself. So for example, they, uh, these uh, women, they have uh, home improvement projects they want to do. So instead of hiring a contractor or doing whatever they would do, they, they're, they're pooling themselves together and saying, we will uh, you know, do this tiling project in a, bath, in a, in a bathroom. So, uh, and they have a whole, ca whole calendars going on of how they're helping each other do these projects sharing the expertise that, that they, that they uh, have. Isn't that, like, isn't that exciting stuff? Um, this is not... Yeah. It is tapping the cognitive surplus, uh, and it's the, the hunger for community, connection, belief, belonging, in a world that is increasingly depersonalized, super-industrialized, over-anonymized, lonely, hurting, feeling powerless or broke, and they're you know fixing each other's bathrooms. They're they're waiting for a way to be powerful together. Is my belief about people in general. And this is about local, real community. That word let's. What can we What can we get done? Everything's being reinvented. I think uh, this is you know talking beyond meetup and beyond these local community groups. Everything in our world is being reinvented by the people self-organized right now. And but what does this have to do with democracy? Um, I was uh, floored by something Tom wrote uh, uh, last year, or this year, I don't know what it was, and he, he had this, he gave this sort of, you know, note to politicians who are interested in e-democracy. He gave five suggestions of what they might want to consider doing. And one of them was, he said, hey, if you're giving out fishing licenses, why not also help connect the people who are fishermen or fisher people and so that they can help each other out with their fishing or, or, or something like that. 
that the government is in this unique position to know who's interested in fishing, but instead of these just discrete transactions, maybe the government can be a catalyst for community and connection that can be so valuable. I took that and, and, and was just thinking about it, there's endless examples. Like, what if the US Small Business Administration, SBA, connected small business people locally to support each other instead of just treating themselves as a distribution point of information. It's an enormous, uh, an interesting thing to reimagine government as a platform for connecting people. I know you, could, you know, it's always been that way to some degree, but the, but the technology in this connected uh, culture that we've got can really make that happen more and more and more. This is not what the mayor of Barcelona was talking about yesterday in his video. Who was here yesterday? He was saying, what he was saying is, and what he was saying is great, just fine about how he's saying, he says, what is he democracy? Well, I mean, now we can talk to the people more, or now the people can talk to us more. Wonderful, good, but not just government to people and people to government, what about the government be a catalyst for people, citizens, to talk to each other. Uh, that is enormously scalable, and, <coughs> and that has a, a, a limitless potential. It's this power of, of, uh, of, of small groups, um, and it also has this, uh, you know, obviously this, this potential to save the government money in all kinds of ways. Where you know why when people if people are struggling with their with their taxes. Yes, they could go to tax preparers, but maybe they could help each other with, it, with, uh, with that process. They can help each other with lots of things. Uh, speaking of, um, you know, quoting old, uh, old European thinkers, de Tocqueville has this line that I love. He says, in de democratic countries, the knowledge of how to combine is the mother of all forms of knowledge. Um, I want to rephrase it right now and say in the 21st century, the technology for how to combine is the mother of all awesomeness. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, uh, this, is the, uh, this, is the, uh, this is a completely ridiculous photo of me. Uh, the, the, earlier this year, the State Department of the US uh, asked me and eight other uh, sort of platform makers, internet platform makers, to uh, jump on a plane and go to Iraq. And, to go, and I couldn't say no, because this idea of um, how it, and our job was to go and talk to Iraqi leaders and sell the idea of the internet as a um, vital plumbing, vital tool for democracy, as an insurance policy against corruption. And the big, you know, the lesson there was that, you know, the people weren't so interested in uh, the internet as a information source, but really just as that pure connection medium for uh, a culture and a society in the 21st century. I think mean, don't have time to get uh, much into that, but you know, talk to me if you want to uh, hear about that that uh, that experience. But what's going on here is that organizing the world's information, you know, the, the Google mission, isn't the only important mission in the world. Information, now this is where I'm going to get a little bit, I'm going to piss some people off, but, you know, information isn't everything. You can, like, we're, we can become obsessed with consuming, 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 consuming the information. And, and you know, I mean, not just the tweet streams and the Facebook streams and, and, the, and all the transparency information, but just, like, we can be in constant consumption mode, and, trans, but, and transparency isn't enough. The, the, the information needs action. I'm a big, big fan of transparency and what's happening there, but that information that comes out of the transparency needs action. Because, you know, we all, your rights to free speech and information aren't, the only, aren't your only powerful human rights. I mean, in our media-saturated culture, you know, we just kind of think about free speech and information, but like we got these things called, you know, uh, uh, like the European Union Charter of Fundamental Rights, Article 12, Freedom of Assembly, Freedom of Assembly and Association. Everyone has this right to assemble and associate. I don't, people, are, you know, it, it take, you don't even um, an associate to associate or create an association uh, is kind of a foreign concept. Clay Shirky says we can organize without organizations. But actually, you know, having some bit of structure where people can uh, are collectively powerful, they act together, is, that, is, that, is actually a really important thing. So I propose that what a lot of us are working on, and it's not going so well stated, 
is that we're talking about not just the world's information being organized, but the world's people being organized. Or better yet, the world's people self-organized. That's what's going on on Twitter. That's what's going on when we're reinventing the encyclopedia. That's what's going on when we're going to kind of reinvent banking with peer-to-peer -peer lending. When we, you know, down the line, when insurance gets completely turned on its head, when social networks turn into, you know, reinvented uh, insurance. That's what, that's what, you know, uh, you know, uh, P2P media is, and all these things going on. And I want to suggest that, that this, this, uh, this mission that Meetup's got, which is a local community group everywhere about most everything, or a meetup everywhere about most everything, so that it's there when you need it, so that you can go within miles and within days to a local community that uh, will help you out, will support you, will you know, do all these things that I, that, uh, of the, the examples that I gave you, that's uh, really powerful stuff. So finally, we have, we have more power than ever to unleash collaboration and collective action. And so uh, just a, 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 some thought about how to do that is to think of organizing as not just to act against, but that participation mean, can mean lending your hands and not your, just your voices. Who here uh, has... Um, constituents or lots of fans of, or followers on Facebook or Twitter or your organizations are trying to build uh, big bases like that? Any of you? So I want to propose that fans and followers are often wasted. The, uh, the opportunity is to get them to self-organize, mobilize them, mobilize them to help themselves. Take heed in Tom's ideas about, you know, it's like they're solving their own problems. Uh, give them permission to kick ass, distribute responsibility, not just information and tasks. Not just, you know, here's the discrete calls you can make, but how do you get fans and followers to, to, to take real responsibility and roles? This is about building durable movements. Um, just w a, a, an example, who here is, uh, have you heard of, do you know Beppe Grillo in Italy? Some people, you know, think he's a, he's a whack job joke, but um, but it's actually really fascinating. He has, he's the, you know, he's got, he's this guy who is, uh, um, uh, you know, one part comedian, one part activist, and he told his followers to, to self-organize local groups. And here in 300 towns across Italy is a Beppe group that are active as hell. And really, they're, and, and they are, they are, uh, you know, I'm sure this isn't completely true, but this is their, their dream is to, you know, create an alternative municipality structure where these people in these towns, these followers of him, are going and, and trying to get elected locally and actually just going and doing stuff. It's really fascinating. Um, see leaders emerge and watch people be powerful together. Uh, thank you.